Good morning, Broncos country. Welcome into another episode of GMB as we break down the Denver Broncos preseason game from Friday evening. Set the table for this morning's practice at the Centura Health Training Center ahead of Saturday's second preseason showdown against the San Francisco 49ers. I'm Cody Rourke. I cover the Denver Broncos daily in person here for Mile High Sports. And look, I think one of the things we have to talk about here is it's preseason folks. And, and this is the one thing that I did not miss about football being back. And in particular, the preseason, I was excited that football's back, but you see so much overreaction. You see so much negativity, so much sky is falling and folks, the preseason doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Denver went two and one last year in the preseason. I don't think anybody has like, oh, the ambitions. Yeah, Super Bowl. You know, or it, it's on the way there. We got to put things into perspective here. The preseason is meant for one specific thing: getting continuity. Well, two specific things. Let me add something there. First one: getting continuity within your group of starters when they do play. That you need those reps before the regular season. That's what Sean Payton wants. And second, it gives you a chance to evaluate your young guys. It allows you to put these players in positions, and then they have to go out there and you see how they react. And as a coach, it's something that I think, from my perspective, I value because for me, I get the all twenty-two and I look at it and I'm watching specific things. I'm watching maybe a play where something big happened, or I'm watching a play where something negative happened. And in my head, I'm thinking about that. I'm like, okay, what was the outcome of this? What led to this? Was, was this player out of position? Did the player on the opposing side of the ball, the, the, the opponent, did they just overpower? Did they do something specific that maybe exploited a weakness? These are what you look at in the preseason. It's not necessarily about, okay, oh, Denver lost by one point. Oh, the season's already over. I, I've seen so much of that on social media, folks, it's the preseason. I get it. The expectations for the Broncos are high every single year, but let's be realistic here. It's not just going to turn overnight here under Sean Payton. We've said it here. I've said it on the record on GMB. It could take some time into the regular season for the Broncos to truly be where they need to be. It could take three to four weeks, maybe even a little bit longer, maybe not even this year. You have to take this thing week by week, folks. Week by week. And right now, what they're doing in the preseason doesn't necessarily matter as much. The outcome of the game is meaningless. You want to win, obviously. It's nice when you win. But it's about evaluating your younger guys, more importantly, getting that bigger picture perspective for the future here. So I think that's something you have to keep an eye on here for the Broncos. Obviously, they lose 18-17 on Friday night to the Arizona Cardinals. And let's dive into the biggest story here so far as we talk about it. Everybody wanted to know, how did the Broncos starters and Russell Wilson look in the limited action that they got? Well, can we really say limited if they got four offensive series? Let's talk about it. The first offensive series that they were there, they went three and out. The one thing that Broncos fans saw too much of last year, and the moment they went three and out, my phone, I automatically looked on Twitter, and I was like, oh, gosh, here we go. They're like, oh, yeah, this offense is still the same. Da, da, da. Folks, it's way too early. Like, these guys got to play against people that they're not accustomed to going against every single day. That's how you work out the kinks. And, and while you look, I think a lot of people look at the outcome or they look at the end result, but they don't look at the process of it, right? And you have to build up toward that. You have to look at, okay, what are some things that they're doing well? What are some things they need to improve on? Now, boy, we're going to touch on a lot of that here on this morning's episode of GMB. Broncos back on the practice field here this morning. After this, I'm headed over there, and I'll have you covered with all the recap, milehighsports.com. But let's go through the first four series here for the Broncos starting offense led by Russell Wilson here. Now, I think when we look at certain things is what what's different? What's noticeably different? What did we see from Russell Wilson that was a little different? And, and I think the one thing we've seen all throughout training camp, I think he's been decisive. He's getting the ball out of his hands quickly which is good versus holding on to it for a long period of time. And some of the same things that happened last year, Russ didn't have a lot of time to have a clean pocket just to stand there. And, and there was a lot of pressure being set by the Arizona Cardinals. I was, I was surprised a little bit. And to be honest with you, I was surprised at how many cover zero looks the Arizona Cardinals were throwing in the freaking preseason. Like that's so weird because usually you see a lot of vanilla basic stuff. Denver defensively, they didn't do anything crazy. They didn't send these crazy extravagant blitz or, or stunts to try to get after the opposing quarterback. They just ran their vanilla stuff, and they wanted to see how they do it in some of their base formula 
formations on the defensive side of the ball. The Cardinals, on the other hand, they're like, nope, we're going to send pressure after Russell Wilson. It was really, really weird. It's very unorthodox to see that type of aggressiveness in the preseason campaign. But the first series, it was a punt. It, Russ had a great playoff play. We're seeing a lot of play action, run action stuff so far here from Sean Payton, which I like because it's a combination of you got some under center stuff, you got some stuff in the shotgun, but then you're also doing different protection looks as well because if you're going to do run action, what that usually means, it, it reads as if it's a run play, right? You're going to have a guard pull, but he's going to be used in protection instead. And I like that. And that gave Russ some time to fire a couple of shots to Cortland Sutton for some downfield gainage. You need to see creativity like that, that the Broncos simply haven't had offensively. But if you're going to run run action, if a guard's going to pull to come out to the other side to protect, you need to have replacement there, replacement protection. And that's where that tackle has to do a really good job of stepping down and sealing. Uh, so you, you saw a couple of the things. One of the passes obviously led to it being a punt and a three and out. Russ was looking for a receiver there. A defensive lineman got his hand up and batted it down at the line of scrimmage, knocked it away incomplete. The next series, obviously the Broncos capitalized a little bit on good field position. A Sang Bassey had an interception, returned at 31 yards, and the offense came downfield. Cortland Sutton had a big play, and then a negative play happened. And it wasn't necessarily by Russell Wilson. It was Garrett Bowles giving up a sack off the left side. And this is, I think, where we have to have a little bit of a bigger conversation here. Like This is definitely an area of concern because all throughout training camp, when talking about Denver's offensive line, I've been on the premise of saying that I do feel like I'm a little uneasy right now about offensive tackle. Obviously, Mike McGlinchey is going to be out a few weeks with a, a knee sprain, and that's going to take time for him to have to come back and try to be ready for that week one regular season opener, having not gotten any reps here in the preseason. And that, to me, I think concerns me to a very, very extensive limit here. Then you look at Garrett Bowles. Garrett played on Friday night, and this is, I think, what we need to put in perspective. Garrett played on Friday night his first football games and suffering a major leg injury breaking his leg there's going to be some rust that comes with that folks there's going to be some hesitation that comes with that because it's a lot different than practice yeah in, in practice you do some full speed stuff but the i would say what's at stake is a little bit larger in an actual game so for garrett it's about we're just trying to get that communication down with he and ben powers more importantly identifying who might be coming free on a blitz and understanding there's footwork there's adjustment involved there for garrett he was rusty. I, I think he, maybe even he would say that as well. Does this linger, right? I think this is something we have to keep an eye on here for the remainder of the preseason and, and the games that he plays. And even going into the regular season, does this type of issue persist with Garrett Bowles throughout the year? That, I think, is a question that we have to ask ourselves here. But I, I, I hope Broncos fans are willing to give him at least the benefit of the doubt for the moment, considering his first game back since breaking his leg. It's understandable. It really, really is. And so... If it doesn't persist, then that's great. That's him shaking off the rust. If it persists, then I think there's a, a bigger issue and a larger conversation that we'll have here on GMB as time goes forth there. So there is the sack that that happens. Obviously, it backs the Broncos up. They go out, they they kick their try to kick their first field goal attempt of the night from 47 yards. Brett Maher misses it. And then the, the Cardinals get the ball right back. The second, I mean, the third offensive series that they get. Elliot Fry gets a chance to kick a field goal, misses it. And so that we're going to get into that conversation here in a minute. Denver got a fourth series because Sean Payton wanted to see them do something where, like, you can't just leave the preseason, you know, with like, ah, we, you know, we couldn't really do anything. We, you know, we shot ourselves in the foot with some missed field goals, some missed opportunities. They went out there. Russell Wilson looked on a third down play, used his legs to scramble out, find Jerry Judy. Jerry went to go look it in, turned his head upfield before he secured it, dropped it. And that brought up a fourth and five. The very next, Sean Payne's like, they're staying out there. And they went to back to the same exact play design that Russell Wilson took a deep shot to Cortland Sutton earlier on here. But Jerry Judy came open, shook his defender, because once again, the Cardinals on fourth and five sent a cover zero blitz. And Russ did a great job hanging in the pocket, delivering a throw, and still getting hit after he delivered that throw. Like he stood there and took it. I, you have to applaud that. Like so many times, I would even say last year, there were times where Russ knew that was coming and would kind of try to get it away and anticipate getting hit. Dude stood in the pocket, delivered a throw to Jerry Judy on fourth and five, ran it in for 21 yards for a touchdown there. Okay, there's some things that they they built off of. Now the common thing you're going to hear, you might hear it in the comment section here. You're going to hear it on talking points. Well, they did that against the second string defense. Who cares? 
Who cares that they did that against a second string defense? You want to see them go out there and operate the foundational aspects of this offense. Now, here's the thing, and I'm going to go on a little tangent here because it drives me absolutely nuts at how some fans, not all fans, Brooke, and, and, and I'm not saying this for all of Broncos country, and I think this could be the case for every single fan base in the NFL, but there are some fans that literally can't be, can't be excited or, or can't be positive about anything that happens. It's always a negative, right? So let's look at it from the lens of where this is coming from. The common thing that I've heard on social media that's been replied to me, they, they went, it was against the second team defense. Okay, so what? If they didn't capitalize, if they didn't score, then the narrative would be, oh, well, they couldn't even do it against a second team defense. So they can't even win no matter what, no matter what they do. If they do something bad, bang, they get torn apart by the fan base. They do something good. Well, it was just against the second team defense, so it doesn't really count. It's not about that here in the preseason. It's about just going out there, getting some more reps, getting some experience against another defense that's throwing something at you. And now with that, here's the thing. Sean Payton, the offense, they have tape out there on them. So now Sean Payton gets to look at it from the lens of a coach how are the San Francisco 49ers going to play us when we come out in this formation? He's going to visualize that because now they have film on the 49ers from the preseason. That's how this game works. It's not so, you know, it's not as simple, I think, as many people want to make it out to be. It's not black or white. There's so much gray area to be had in this game. And I, I get irritated, folks, just because, like I said, I, I've been around the game. I know football. I know the concepts. I know schemes, offense, defense. And it's like, I try to explain it as best as I can from the lens of a player and a coach. And it's just like, fans are like, nope, get rid of this guy, fire this guy, cut this guy. That's not the way it should work, folks. I understand. Patience is hard. And Broncos fans have been through a lot of just, hey, you know, they're almost there. They're almost there. I get it. I understand the skepticism. But folks, pump the brakes a little bit on the sky is falling stuff after week one of the preseason. Come on. We got to be better than that. Because if that's the case, if we're overreacting to preseason game number one, the discourse about this team when there's good moments and bad moments, it's going to be miserable this season because there's always going to be somebody that's nitpicking something that they did, whether they did it right, whether they did it wrong. So, folks, please just be patient with it. Let it play out. You got to take this whole game week by week. So there is that. I would say that maybe the concerns that I had overall in this entire game and this operation here for Denver or that uh, for the offense, the first team offense specifically, there were too many free rushers coming forth at Russell Wilson. I think he did a lot. He went seven or 13 for 90 something yards, had a 124.2 quarterback rating and obviously a touchdown to Jerry Judy. There were a couple of drop passes that happened. Obviously Jerry had the one and then there was one, I think early on in that, in that series there, but not by Jerry, but by another player for me though, I, I think that Russ's decisiveness, him being able to stand there, get the ball to his hands quickly is good. And yeah, you know, there was that third down play where he took a shot to Cortland Sutton, but didn't get a chance to set his feet there. And ideally, yes, you go back, you watch the tape. He had Dulcich coming underneath. He had Jerry Judy coming across over the top. And maybe if he stands there a little bit and sees that, look, it's a first down. You lead your guy there. That's something that Sean Payton went back to on that touchdown play, though, to Jerry Judy. Same exact play design. And this time he found Jerry Judy wide open. So it's one of these things, make these mistakes in the preseason. So, you know, like, okay, Hey, on this play, I went to that read first. Maybe I should have went here as my first read. That's where you get all this stuff out of the way. Cause look, this is still a brand new offense. They're still going through the install things that we have to talk about here. So I'd say those are my legitimate concerns so far early on here. We'll see how the offense and the offensive line bounces back this upcoming week against San Francisco. That's a great test, by the way, they're very talented defensive squad. But some other concerns that we have is the kicking competition. I got off to a rough start over the weekend between Brett Maher and Elliot Fry. Let's start off with Brett Maher. First field goal attempt of the game. Missed it, 47 yards. His second one from 52 was blocked. Luke Wattenberg got rolled over by a Cardinals defender and it allowed the guy to come free, stick his hand up in the air and get a hand on the football. I'm not necessarily holding that against Brett Maher in this situation. And then he was one of one on extra points. So, We'll have a little bit of a, a larger discourse here, but now let's get to Elliot Fry. He went one of two on his field goal attempts. First one that he missed. The second one was right before halftime. He booted it in from 55 yards. You like to see that because that's an element that Denver needs. They need someone who can kick from long range, and he was one of one on extra points. Now, I think the conversation that you're seeing here, and look, the Broncos kicker for the regular season may not even be on the roster. I think that's something we have to talk about as a real possibility. However, after preseason game number one, 
a lot of people just want the Broncos to cut both these guys and bring somebody else in. I don't think you do that just yet. I think you have to give it to week two of the preseason. What do these guys do here in week two? Because I here's not to sound like an excuse, and this definitely probably sounds like it, but also Matt Prater missed one from like 38 yards, if I'm not mistaken, 38 or 42, one of those other ones. He missed one as well, and I part of me was thinking, okay, is it the field surface or something that's wrong with this? Let's see how things go. I think it's way too early to cut both of these guys, but obviously, yes, they have to make their kicks. That's the most important thing that you need in the NFL, and that's why the Broncos moved on from Brandon McManus because he was missing kicks. But even the discourse to this point about the kicking game of all things, the Broncos kicking game in the week one of the preseason, it, it wasn't going well enough to the point where all of a sudden fans are now saying, oh, bring back Brandon McManus. Why do we cut McManus? People, you got to realize Brandon McManus is one of the worst kickers in the NFL last year from a consistency standpoint, from an accuracy standpoint. He was bottom ranked in the NFL. So just because in the preseason, you know, the guys that you brought in that are going in a competition struggled, they missed their, their first couple of kicks there. You want to go back to you know the devil that you know that wasn't doing that good, wasn't consistent either? Because in the regular season, the conversation around McManus was, why is he still on the team? Because he was missing extra points. He was missing kicks that you should have made from 38 yards. There's got to be some sort of consistency in this process, right? I mean, if you want a new kicker, you got to find a guy who's right. And, and it's not going to be in week one of the preseason. It's going to determine who it is. But – there's a lot of pressure now on both of these kickers. And I'd say right now, because he made a 55-yard field goal, Elliot Fry might, might be the leader in the clubhouse. He's going to have to be better. He's going to have to be more consistent. And look, it adds a little bit of pressure here to Brett Maher, even though the second one was not his fault. Still, it didn't lead to a, an outcome where the Broncos came away with points. So I think we're going to set the table here for the remainder of this morning's episode of G. MB by talking about what does Denver fix this week going into preseason action number two against the San Francisco 49ers. How does the offensive line adjust, right? More importantly, the left side of the O-line. And you can maybe say the right side as well. Isaiah Prince struggled a little bit in this game here. Obviously, no Mike McGlinchey, but maybe you see a little bit more of a uh, Demontre Jacobs, or maybe you see undrafted rookie for agent Alex Pacheski. Maybe you see him get some action because I think at the tackle position for the evening, He's probably their best offensive tackle, even though he's working with a third-string offense at that point. You have to find a way to generate some comfortability, I think, in the eyes of not only just you as a coaching staff. I don't know how the Broncos coaches feel. I know how I feel as an analyst, but I also know how fans feel. And offensive tackle is a little bit of a concern right now. And I, I think when you see an issue on one side of the ball, it magnifies, right? If Garrett Bowles is struggling, it's going to impact the, the guard right next to him. If Isaiah Prince is struggling, it's going to impact Quinn Miners right next to him. If either of the guards struggle, it's going to impact the center in a negative way. You have to have that unit of five guys. They have to be all in sync or else the operation is not going to be consistent. It's not going to look good. So how do the Broncos fix some of the issues that they had there? Because I imagine, I don't think, you know, the, the Cardinals going to cover zero blitz was a little weird. I don't think San Francisco is going to do that this upcoming week. But then again, it's the NFL. Nothing ever surprises me anymore. But how do you shore up some of those protection issues? Because there were times where it, when they sent a cover zero blitz, they were bringing the safety, they'd have their outside edge rusher step wide. So that forces the tackle to have to step wide because you have to do that. But you always hear in pass protection rules and philosophy, the closest man to the quarterback is the most dangerous man. And that's if a guy's shooting inside the gap is what we call the C gap there. If he's shooting through the C gap, and has a free lane to the quarterback, that's priority number one versus a guy who's trying to bow wide against you on the outside edge. So I'm not sure what's going to happen, but now there's game tape out there. You allow these coaches to see these guys evaluate game tape, game situation against somebody else, and now you get to carry that adjustment forward this upcoming week. It's a good challenge for the Broncos. And I think another thing to look at here as we close out today's episode of G&B, Broncos country, not to say that there's a quarterback controversy or competition here, but Ben DiNucci has had a pretty good training camp, and Jarrett Stidham, as of late, has been a little hesitant, has been a little shaky. He was 5 of 15 passing in Friday night's loss to the Arizona Cardinals. Ben DiNucci came in with 6 of 7. It was efficient, getting the ball out of his hands quickly, dinking and dunking, and, and just doing things, moving the operation well. I Part of me wonders after, after preseason game number one, going into preseason game number two this upcoming Saturday, Will we see maybe a switch up? Will Ben DiNucci get some work with the second team offense and Jarrett Stidham with the third team just to see how these guys gel? Can DiNucci do it with the twos versus the threes? 
Valid question to throw out here, though. But Broncos country, thank you so much for tuning in to this morning's episode of GMB. I'm getting ready to head off to Dove Valley for Broncos practice this week at training camp. It's the final week that fans get to have a chance to attend. Now, today's practice is media only, so you will not be getting any live tweet updates as practice goes on. But then Tuesday and Wednesday, to my knowledge, are open to the fans, and then they'll have a final practice on Thursday and then preseason game on Saturday, so they'll travel on Friday. So that's what you can expect this week. I'll be at practice every single day this week, so expect a recap video, another discussion here on GMB all throughout the week as we prepare for the week two of the NFL preseason. I'm Cody Rourke. We'll see you tomorrow for a brand new GMB.